Welcome to the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips. And I'm Susie Phillips. And today on the American Wood Shop, it's all about scroll saw projects. Mine's 3D Tree of Life, and Scott's got his own version. Okay, now that's for a cabinet that we're going to make, but today you'll learn how to master the art of the scroll saw. Very easy if you know a few simple tips, so don't go anywhere. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft. Since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. Okay, let's talk about some scroll saw ideas today. I'm doing a 3D scroll saw project that you use a series of knives to carve. And we started with my pattern here that Scott has. Scott, show my patterns. Okay, now that's the top pattern. That's basswood, half inch thick. And it works with a pattern that's 11 by 17. Nice and big. Three layers. Okay, that's the middle pattern right there. Again, half inch thick basswood and a backer board. Okay. And that could be plywood or solid wood. So show them the stack up. This is the stack up. This is the backboard that I'm painting to give the light, the sun, and the sky. It is a tree of life that's after right. all. That's right. And this is the second tree that's behind the first one. That's so cool. And a tree of life, you say, that's usually one tree. Well, I've got two trees here. Because really, one's, this is my tree. And the tree behind me is Scott, because he's always got my back and he's always there. So I can't there you beat go. that. <laughs> Did I marry right or what? OK, and you stack it together. And you can use weather wood or whatever you want to trim it out and make it just a freestanding work of art. Now, on this, this is a different scroll saw technique. That's a bevel cut. Let's head over to the scroll saw and do a workshop. So let the games begin. Susie has her tree of life. And this is my tree of life. It's a hard maple tree. And what I've done on a piece of butternut, I've done a series of angled cuts so that some of the pieces pop out and some of the pieces pop in. And I've detailed it with a chip carving knife and did some wood burning. And this will house a good hand plane collection. Now, here's the easy way to cut a pattern like that out. Make the pattern. OK. So I drew a pattern out and then copied 8.5 by 11, maximum size pattern. And it says out, which means I want this part of the pattern to pop out. And the other pieces that say in, different technique. Now. Temporary bonding spray adhesive. I have a good backer over there. And I want a light uniform coat, and this is key. You want just the right amount over the entire pattern. And you spray it on, and you let it cure for two to three minutes. If you put that down right away, you'll never get that paper off. So, pattern down, glue up, and while that is working, we have the Phillips name that we'll cut out later, too, for the Tree of Life. But I'm going to prep my workpiece. This is a piece of butternut. And I'm using a scrub plane to work the wood down. Kind of go across the grain to scrub off the rough work pieces with a scrub plane. And then I can go to a five and a half smoothing plane. And you hit the high and low spots, and before long, lower that blade just a bit, and you use your body. And you can see how the bench, dog here, dog here, tail vice, secures that workpiece. So the clock is ticking, literally. So on that glue, because if it air dries too long, it won't be sticky enough. The other thing about a workbench, you want to work around the workbench so you never 
push the workbench up against the wall. That looks really good. From rough to smooth. A couple more smoothing passes and we're going to cut out our pattern. Perfect. Now that's ready. Let's see how the pattern's doing. There we go. There's the grain. Cathedral arches up. That's good. That's just right. So I want to center the tree up and leave room for the name. Balance it left and right. That looks really good right there. Press it down. And now's the time to see if you have any lifting on the pattern. That looks perfect. Now let's go to the scroll saw and get set up. Before we get started on the saw, everything you see here is a cut. So it gives us a really cool pattern. Wait until the finish goes on that. So I'll set that aside. And now we have our pattern ready. And I need to drill a hole, a tiny little hole, at about a two degree angle to leaning the drill down to the right. And ease that through. And that's in a key place where the branch swings around to the trunk of the tree. Now, what I have here is a number five blade. And on average, you want six to 10 teeth engaged in the thickness of whatever material you're cutting. So in this case, it's six TPI, um, which honestly gives me a perfect cut. Now watch what happens down here. I release the lock and I dial this over to the left to two degrees and lock it in place. And what that does now is that tilts the blade to the right at a two degree angle. Now this is kind of like corks in a bottle. See if I push this one out, it locks in. If I push that one down and that one down, it locks down, which is perfect. That's what I want it to do for the effect of the tree. So let me show you with everything locked in place, the guard locked and whatever you do, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. Work safely. These are safety glasses, and this is on dust collection on demand. So when I turn this on and start to make a cut, where's the sawdust? There isn't any. Now I'm making a counterclockwise cut right now. So what's going to happen here? This blade is absolutely magical. So what we're going to do is give the entire project its look. This pops out and locks securely like a cork in the bottle. You can see the cut is kind of V-shaped and it pinches it down. So that's counterclockwise. So what we're going to do is release the tension back here, release the knob, tension knob back there, release the blade, bring the arm up on this scroll saw, and it's slightly bent, but there's a lot of life left in that blade. And what I'm going to do is ease the blade right through that hole that we drilled, and then this is called a piercing cut. The teeth are forward. What I'll do now is lower that arm, and close the chuck, add the tension, more tension back here. And you want it to be nice and tight. If it's spongy, as you start to make a cut, just add more tension. Too much, you'll break the blade. And this is at full speed. So now what I'm going to do is stay on the outside edge of the line, holding the workpiece flat. It helps to have a large, Scroll saw. This is a 20 inch from the blade to the back throat. 20 inches. And I guess the biggest tip I have for scrollers, find blades that you really like. Spend a little bit more for the blade. Better steel. Precision ground is nice. That's what this is. And I'm all the way down to the point, getting ready to swing the curve. Okay, and what's going on? I'm hitting the back of the throat back here. So how do you deal with that? Time to turn it off, put in a new blade. I'll get set up for that. 
I've put in a new blade through a pierced cut here, and it's called a spiral blade. It's a very fine blade, same about thickness as this one, except it has twists in it, which makes it a little bit more frail, so I don't run them with quite as much tension. The neat thing about a spiral is this. Let's turn it on, get the puffer to blow the sawdust away. Hold this flat to the work surface. And a spiral blade lets you use every side of that blade to make the cut. And we continue to go in a counterclockwise direction. Taking my time. And if I do make a mistake, I just keep going because no one will ever see it. Okay, so I just use this technique right here to outsmart the scroll saw so I can use whatever size material I want and the throat does not get in the way because I could, for instance, swing it around like this and just use the side of the blade. I've switched back to the number five because I just like the cut on a number five with a normal blade that's flat, not teeth all the way around. I have more control and so will you. So spiral blades are only there for one reason and that's to give you the capacity to outsmart a board so that you can work with a smaller scroll saw and get around the neck. I'm not too worried about staying precisely on the line because after all it is a tree, natural form. Okay, now we're all the way back around to where we started. We'll turn it off. Let that come to a stop and raise this up. That comes out like that. Kind of hard on that blade, but it's still going. Straighten it out. That's what a better blade does for you, better steel. And now, moment of truth, pop this in from the back and we can press that forward and it locks in and taps right out. And as we make these other internal cuts, that will shrink the pattern down even more. You can see how it locks on the back side. But we'll pop this out now. And we've gone counterclockwise. And now what I'll do is drill a series of pilot holes at a two degree angle. And then I'll make a cut in a clockwise fashion on everything that says in. And once I get those cuts made, we'll see how the pattern shapes up. All right, that's all the way through now. And what I'll do is ease that up. You can see how that pops down like the rest of its mates over here. And now what I need to do in a counterclockwise pattern is cut the canopy loose from the trunk of the tree. So I want the angle to stay the same, tilted to the right at two degrees. Lock this in place. Put the tension back on. A little bit more here. Hear that? High C, that's what you want. If it's higher than that, you'll break blades. At full speed. Canopy separated from the branches. Counterclockwise. This material is one inch thick, so it gives me enough to work with as I carve the tree down and add those accents. So that gets some wood burning where those lines are, and I'll show you that on pyrography in a second. And then that's going to pop out like that, which is great. So that's almost done. What I'll do now, I can leave it fully tensioned. I need to square this blade back up. So I'll release the lock, square it to zero. Okay, and now what I'll do, it's, that's locked back in. 
it's less likely to put the blade in a bind. I'll go in there and I'll make all of these cuts. A few of the cuts have to have a piercing hole. Now, here I'm just going to drill it square, not tilted like the other ones. So pierce that blade through there, and that comes all the way in. I think that's the only one that I had to pierce. Oh, this one as well. It's a little touches. Watch that bit. That make a big difference. Now, I'll finish sculpting this. Wherever there's a line, I take it. Selecting the right blade for the job is key. You don't want it to be any thicker than it has to be because it makes turns harder. So use the thinnest blade possible. If they're super thin, dial the speed down. Okay, now it's okay on a scroll saw. So carefully back out of a cut. Hold it down to the work surface. You wouldn't want to back out of a cut on a bandsaw. And let's take a look at this. Okay, that looks really good right there. We'll lay this down. And a good tip is to use a heat gun to just heat up the surface of your pattern. That reactivates the adhesive, makes it come off a whole lot easier. And the whole idea is keep the spray adhesive on the paper. Don't leave it on the wood. That's why you never spray the wood to put the pattern down. You would leave the glue residue on the wood. So I'll just ease this off, needs a little bit more heat, and get all the paper off of everything except for the tree, because the tree needs to be wood burned with the pyrographer. So I'll get the patterns off, and then it's off to the wood burning. Okay. So the paper comes right off. That looks really good. All the pieces except for the tree, which is right down here. And I'm using a detail master now. And look at that point. And on top of my paper pattern, it shows the accents for the bark. And also what I can do in the Junction of the limbs, I can burn in shadow lines, use the flat of the blade and different parts of the blade for different burn effects. That looks really cool. And this is called a pyrographer, but if you don't have one of these, you could use a soldering iron, but always be careful with it, with wood and paper. Don't start fires. So I'll just get this done. And then we'll piece all the parts together after I get the paper off of this. It's so much fun. I'm using what's called a stab knife. This is a Wayne Barton design. And you rock this in and you create leaf patterns. And individually, it doesn't stand out. But wait till we get a finish in there. That really is going to help define the canopy of these maple leaves. Now, this is fun piecing together all the parts. We'll bring this up like so. And these just drop straight in. And you fill the gaps. And it's a puzzle. It all comes together beautifully. It's so much fun. Scroll saw work. If you've never done it, it's easy to do. You just have to practice a bit. And don't be afraid of breaking a few blades. OK, there we go because you will. OK, so that's almost ready. That's the wrong way right there. That comes around like that. And now I can bring the main pattern up. This has all been lightly sanded. Drop that down, and then ease it off towards the edge. And I need to pop that canopy out a bit more than the base of the tree. OK, and this is all bevel cut. So it all locks together. OK, and then I can use an eraser to tap these guys down. And when I have them just right, then I can flip it over. That's so cool. Tree of life. And glue it from the back side by using thick viscosity super glue, cyanoacrylate adhesive. 
I just tack it in only along the back seams and I let the glue cure out on its own without an activator, accelerator, and it soaks in and that's there to stay. Let that cure out and we'll do the finish. Now you can see how the trees come together. This is for another door frame and this is for a very special cabinet of mine and to that end underneath of this I need to put the scrolled out Phillips name. So if you look at this you can see yes I use the same technique to cut this out just like I did the straight cuts for the detail in the canopy. So I'll take the letters out and I will place them nicely across the bottom because this is going to be an heirloom down the road for my nephew who is quite a talented woodworker. So I'll get these glued in place and then we will get the finish on. I am using a totally safe finish. It's called Odie's Oxy Oil and I brush that out onto the tree of life. I do not hit the burned areas very hard because you could brush some of that carbon from the pyrographer up into the wood and you don't want that or certainly I don't. So here I'll let that dry and kind of lock in that burning and I'll work on the rest of the hand planed butternut and I left it rough. I like those plain marks in the panel. All wood tells a story and when that one goes on the cabinet door you'll see what story it tells. So I'll get this all brushed out and finished out. It's looking good. Darkens up the wood and then once we have these dried and I have that onto the cabinet door over to see Susie's work. Now that I got all the carving done, I'm gonna put some true oil on it, which I already did here, just to kind of help seal it. That way when I'm painting it, um, it does absorb all the paint, and I can go back in and kind of water it down if I need to. I'm starting with the Payne's gray color of acrylics, or, or what I'm using, and just gonna brush it in there, and keep going and get it. And that's my first coat. And then I'll do some browns over it and just really start giving it life and looking like a real tree with all the different colors. I love the frame you've got for it, Scott. Okay, and the easy yeah. way to do the frame is to just cut this channel in the middle for the thick stack, the three pieces at the table saw with the dado cutter. And then miter cut it at a miter saw and you can box that in and make that freestanding. So we'll get this done. All right. All right, well, what do you think? Well, you missed a spot. Yeah, <laughs> probably missed a lot. Oh, I'm just kind of texturing here to make the grass kind of come alive. And as you can see, I'm not shy about using color. Well, we do have an expert right here yeah, who what understands do you think, trees. <laughs> well, he said, oh. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's that's real. Okay. Let's get out there. <laughs> okay, no, you're ready for the frame here. So yeah. I'm going to slide this in to the frame. Cool, I like that. Yeah, that's just great. And it needs to be rustic. And then I'll bring up the trim piece, bring it all together, and it's time for the final reveal. Now, the finishing touches. Is it ever really done? No, I'll probably keep <laughs> dabbing at it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thanks, it looks great. I like the way you framed it out. It looks really cool. It's a great accent for any room. Wonderful project, easy to do. And you can see how the color of the Odie's oil really brought that butternut out. Dimensional, I love that. And then with this cabinet, I told you, here's the reveal. Very cool, it's, very cool. What's that all about? Oh. Good grief. And then there's a <laughs> buckeye in here. Boy, that's a <laughs> conflict if I ever saw one. Okay, and look at that tool collection. This is for you, Chris. So, not anytime soon. <laughs> but it will be your heirloom. And if you're a woodworker, you need to do things like this. Put your name on it. Now you know the scroll saw tips to do that. That's right, you just gotta have fun with it. And scroll saw work is fun. So there you have it from the American Wood Shop this week. We had a ball. We did. Okay. <laughs> See you next week.
I like your tree of life. And I love yours. Well, thank you. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. For more information behind the scenes at the American Wood Shop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Singing, hey.